Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. I am here today to talk about a um, particular fixed star that I have got connections to. And it's one that is going to be activated quite strongly in the coming um, weeks and months. So I wanted really just to share some information and my perspective about this star and how we can work with it. Now, before I go any further, I'm a galactic and an intuitive astrologer and I work with the fixed stars and cosmic points along with more traditional astrology to look at, you know, what kind of star energies we are working with in this lifetime in terms of your own personal birth chart and also at a collective level. I also look into star steed lineage and heritage, soul purpose, soul origin, and really just um, accessing any information that can help you to really understand yourself at a deeper level and to understand why you are here, what you're here to work on, how you are here to grow and evolve. So if you want to know more about my work and my readings, um, I have a website, spiralbright.co.uk. And if you're interested in the Galactic astrology and fixed stars you can go to galacticastrochart.com and get a free and um, galactic um, chart um, prepared for you or um, created for you which will show you some of your key alignments and then if you need any help interpreting that um, I offer that service along with lots of other galactic astrologers and quantum soul practitioners through Juliet Belazi's website. So, um, yeah, fascinating, fascinating rabbit hole to go down if this is the sort of thing you are interested in. But just to, um, yeah, today's video, I want to talk about Alphard, which is the star in the Hydra constellation. Now, this is the serpent constellation it is actually the biggest and longest um star constellation in our skies but it's probably one of the lesser known ones certainly you know most of us have heard of Sirius Orion Arcturus um Sir, the Pleiades Draco etc but um Hydra doesn't often sort of get a lot of attention or a lot of notice but it is being activated and um, because this star is going to be exactly conjunct the sun at our next full moon, which is in August. And it is also building up to an exact square with Uranus because this star lies at 27 degrees, 37 minutes of Leo currently. So as Uranus builds towards 27 degrees of Taurus, it is coming into a square. Now, it won't become exact to the minute until next year, but it is going to get so really close and certainly close enough for this to be um, really significant and really influential. So this is a really long star system. There is only actually one sort of key star that shines um, out and that is really noticeable and that is Alphard itself. So it is often known as the lone star because of its geography in the skies, because it appears to be on its own and um, it's quite distant from its neighbouring stars and um, which are hard to see because they are so dim and so faint because they're so far away. Um, it's also known as the heart star. And of course, because we are working with Leo energy, you know, this brings forward themes of courage, of being seen, of the heart and so on. But um, it is believed by some that this particular star system and this star has had its sort of um, existence or awareness or notoriety um, repressed or hidden because it is so powerful. And when I explain some of the symbolism and what it represents, you know, it might become clear why that might be. So Hydra is the water serpent. So instantly, you know, we are working with serpent, with snake energy, and this is all about transformation. But the snake or serpent is probably one of the oldest symbols in um you know, it, it appears in almost every culture. It is very ancient. 
it is very divine in some ways but evil in others and um, you know this kind of brings forward themes of regeneration of transformation and transmutation transfiguration and shapes shifting and um, you know the snake is able to regenerate from itself as it sheds its skin it is almost reborn so there are themes of death of rebirth and of being able to let go of what no longer serves and what has been outgrown. So, you know, already you can see how the energy of this star is going to be really working with us as we move through these times. Um, deeply connected to the divine feminine, to creativity, to fertility, extremely powerful. And often, you know, when we're working with the star, there can be kind of um, almost a lack of awareness of how powerful it is and how powerful you therefore are with it activated in your chart. Um, snake energy, serpent energy is very healing. Um, it can, you know, give you eternal life. So again, that sort of theme of um, eternal life and eternal youth comes forward. It's linked to awakening, to enlightenment, to knowledge, to ancient knowledge and ancient wisdom. And it is also linked to kundalini energy and the cycle of life and life force. So the snake is one of these creatures which, you know, for some it represents healing. So it is a force for good deeply powerful for others it is feared it is linked to evil it has the power the snake has the power to kill and to be deadly and you know there are links to the underworld if we think of harry potter you know nagini the snake is you know the archetypal villain and to be feared and again snakes you know appear rear their heads throughout our movies our, our fairy tales our stories throughout history so there's a real sort of crossover between dark and light between good and evil between light and shadow as this creature this symbolism really straddles both has a foot in both sort of polarities um snakes can you know be associated with seductive um behaviors manipulative behaviors and they are certainly very complex but I want to talk about the Kundalini energy in particular because this is something that um, I work with. I've been practicing Kundalini yoga since, well, for at least 22 years. And as of this year, 2024, I get up every morning and do a Kundalini yoga set with a group of people online, um, which you know, is transforma transformative in itself. But Kundalini is the energy that we all have. Um, it lies at the base of the spine. And for a lot of us, it is dormant. You know, if you don't tap into this energy, it will just stay there. It's not going to do anything. But if you are able to tap into it and release it, it moves up through the spine, through the central um, system, through the chakra columns in a spiral motion. And it is designed to awaken the chakras and your energy centers as it moves up through the body, hitting the heart, hitting the throat, activating the third eye and up to the crown. And if you are able to work with this energy in a really positive and empowering way, it will help you to become more awake, more aware and more conscious and to ultimately reach a state of enlightenment, which is what a lot of you know yogis are said to have been trying to do obviously in these times you know most of us are householders we have homes we don't have the time to go and sit in cave to meditate and to reach a state of enlightenment but you know the challenge for us is almost a lot harder and a lot bigger because we are having to navigate sort of the mundane reality of being human and you know all the sort of all of that um all that that entails so for a lot of us, it is dormant or asleep, but it represents untapped potential. It represents our creative sexual energy. And, you know, it really, um, as we are able to access it and to release it and allow it to work with us, you know, it really starts to help us realise and reach the truth of who we really are. So this is very much about awakening. And of course, you know, I'm talking about, it's coming into an exact square with Uranus, which is the planet of awakening. So it is almost as if, you know, the Uranian energy is going to really work with us to access and to unlock and to unblock any sort of dormant or trapped Kundalini that we are carrying. And, you know, for me, 
um, I've been working with this energy slowly and steadily for over 20 years. You know, I haven't had a dramatic sudden awakening because my awakening has been very slow. It's been very steady and um, frustratingly slow at times. I'm not going to lie. But for others, you know, this can happen overnight and you can have what is called a Kundalini or spiritual awakening when suddenly you have access to gifts that you simply had no idea you had. And, you know, the world can suddenly go very crazy if you're not expecting it and you're not prepared for it but you know it is my feeling and again this is just my own perspective but as hydra and alphard starts to work with uranus particularly in this square aspect which is very catalytic which is about pushing for growth non-negotiable you have to work with it you know you can't sort of sidestep and ignore it that there are going to be a lot more quite instantaneous sudden and spontaneous awakenings which again you know, from again, my perspective feels like this is part of our ascension process, but it is going to be up to those of us who are already awake and aware, who maybe have done, you know, a lot of deep, intense and drawn out work over many years, you know, decades in my case, and um, for, uh, for those of us who are already awake and have done the work to be there on hand to support those who are suddenly waking up to, you know, the truth of who they are with no warning. Um, and it, it can be quite unsettling in the, you know, to say the least, quite shocking and, um, yeah, quite destabilize, destabilizing. Um, but, you know, ultimately, my feeling is that this star and this energy has been, you know, repressed and hidden because... You know, if we're going to blame the outside world and, you know, and play more of a victim role in this interpretation, you know, we might say everything has been repressed because, you know, there was fear of the power and what the power could do and what, you know, if we know who we are and what we are, then, you know, we're very difficult to control. But there's also for me, I think, you know, we have to take responsibility ourselves. And I think for you know, for the majority, there is this innate fear of how powerful we are. So in almost we kind of repress and limit ourselves because, you know, we are scared of what um, what our potential actually is if we tap into it. And then that might sound a bit strange. But, you know, again, I really feel that a part of this ascension and this awakening and higher consciousness and rising up is about seeing how we have, you know, really worked against ourselves, you know, and you can't always blame another party because if you start to blame someone else, you're not taking responsibility and we have to take responsibility for everything in our world if we are able to, if we're going to be able to shift it. So... Alphard represents, um, for me, ancient knowledge and ancient wisdom, you know, through the serpent symbolism, through that connection. But there is ancient knowledge and wisdom that is actually locked inside of us as individuals, but also locked into the earth. Stuff that has been hidden, you know, maybe to keep it safe because it wasn't time, you know, there was a fear that it was going to fall into the wrong hands. And I know I have got programs um, that sort of link very strongly into that. It's something, you know, and, um, you know, this is very much with the Uranus in Taurus transit, you know, this is about being able to access, to break through, to unlock, to awaken to information, to energy that has been stored within the physical, within the earth, within our physical bodies. Because again, you know, I don't think a lot of us are aware of what we actually hold, what we have within us, you know, and again, this is part of the process about awakening to that and allowing it to be released so that it can be used. But it has to happen at a certain time and perhaps, well, not perhaps, it's certainly up until now, it wasn't the right time. We wouldn't necessarily have known what to do with it. But as we move forward and we evolve and we grow and we learn more, you know, these and the potential is increasing and the timing is coming online. So this is about through Uranus and Taurus and the square to Alphard, accessing the information that is locked, accessing this Kundalini, this power, but um, then being able to embody it through Taurus. So not only unlock it from within, but to bring it into our own bodies, to our world, to our planet. And 
start to work with it in a very physical, very real, very tangible way. There's also the sense, you know, that we are accessing heart consciousness, which again, you know, isn't limited to alpha by any stretch of the imagination, but this is just another activation, another transit that is really working with us to help us do that, because again, that is part of our growth. Um, Alphard is also through Leo, the fire sign. It represents the spark of life, the will to keep going, you know, in spite of the battles of challenges, you know, when you feel that actually it is too hard that you can't go on, you know, there is this spark of life that is innate within all of humanity, you know, the will to live, the will to go on. And again, Alphard really helps to remind us of that. So we have um, the sun is going to align with this star at the time of the full moon so this is really really powerful and this is going to activate um, this energy in a very profound way um, in August. August is quite a um, powerful month in itself we have the 888 portal on the um, Lions Gate um, and you know several other alignments and I will try and get an email out to my mailing list about that um, before I go away but then we have the Uranus activation too. So, you know, this is very much sort of about chaos, creating chaos and disorder, and perhaps, you know, some quite um, unexpected awakenings, which are going to feel very chaotic and very unstabilizing, destabilizing in order to bring order through the fact that disorder creates order, or order is created from disorder and chaos. You know, this is a universal law and sometimes things have to be shaken up in order that they can fall back in the right place when things need to change. And um, But the themes for me that I feel we're going to be working with as we work through Alphard, and you know, this star in particular for me is really powerful and strong because it is an opposition to my sun. So um, with oppositions in galactic astrology, you know, the, the, the energy of the fixed star that lies in opposition to whatever planet it is you're working with, it can feel um, at a distance. It is certainly not integrated in earlier life, but it becomes stronger as you move through life. And it feels for me, um, that I think this is why I wanted to do this video, that you know this energy is very much coming online for me now in particular, especially as I'm practicing Kundalini Yoga on a really regular basis. It's becoming part of my day-to-day -day experience, my day-to-day -day routine. And um, certainly, you know, I am absolutely intrigued by how Alphard is going to play out and work with us over these coming months up to 18 months. Um, certainly, you know, we've got a long time to work with the Uranus transit. Um, so there's themes of really working to integrate and balance out dark and light, which I've talked about extensively already, but really having to face the darker shadow side of our world and of ourselves because we are all connected and everything is part of of. of the greater whole um, and it's about coming back to that neutral point um, which is where we find our wholeness and our sense of self if we can really face what is dark and what we've perhaps you know been ashamed of or hidden or repressed or rejected it's about integrating accepting and embracing all of that so the light and the dark because again I've talked about this in the past you know, ascension is not about all love and light. It is not about, you know, being full of light and love and unconditional love and, you know, spreading light codes and being all wonderful. Yes, that is an aspect of it, but it is also about looking at the dark and the shadow and actually shining a light on the shadow and going through that discomfort and that dis-ease and all that awkwardness and the ick in order to bring everything back to wholeness. So as part of it, we have to look at the stuff that we don't want to look at necessarily, as, and that's part of the process. It's about inviting us to come into a more heart-based consciousness. And of course, when we are operating from the heart, we are standing in truth, the truth of who we are, the truth of our reality. And, you know, it is very difficult to be tricked or waylaid um, when you are working with the frequency of truth. It is easy to trick or, you know, create illusion um, when, you know, you're just looking at something through your eyes or listening through with your ears. But if you are feeling into it from your heart centre, 
you will know if it's real or not. You will know it's true or not. So Alphard is really helping us to step into that mode of being and that mode of operation. Um, I've talked about the spiritual Kundalini awakenings, which I feel are quite likely. So, you know, it might be worth sort of being aware of that um, for your friends and family, just, you know, in case. Um, it's about really letting go of what we have outgrown, what is outdated, what is no longer in resonance. And of course, there's so many other astrological alignments that are working with us to support that process. But again, this star is really going to help with that. It's also going to help us have a much stronger connection to Earth, to nature, to Gaia and to the cycles of life and that natural process, that whole concept of something has to die, that everything comes to a natural end. You know, that is the part that is universal law. It has to end to die in order to be reborn, you know, just like the trees and the leaves on the tree, you know, they go through their green phase, they go brown, whatever, they die, they fall off, the tree sheds, but the tree will come back to life. You know, there is always that spark of life that is constantly there. You know, there, there is often transformation and we may end up being and feeling and looking very different, but, you know, that core essence still remains. So, we have to let go and shed what we have outgrown. And again, you know, the astrology is supporting that. Um, facing the fear is also a big part. Facing your shadow, which I've talked about. And this kind of will to survive, you know, again, it's reminding us that, you know, if things look bleak and we, it looks as if everything is ending, there is within humanity this innate um, will to survive, to recreate, to find new ways. Perhaps we might be forced to find new ways to operate and to live. But, you know, we cannot die. And even if we have to leave our physical bodies, which is inevitable, again, that is part of the human cycle. You know, we don't die. We just transform into another version. And what that might be, we don't necessarily know. But, you know, our life force cannot be extinguished. And it's also about the divine feminine energy rising to the surface, coming more prominent, becoming more aligned and in balance with the masculine because there has been some, you know, a real um, something out of balance with that. We've been dealing much more with the masculine approach, the patriarchal approach, but this is about the divine feminine coming in, gaining strength, gaining momentum and inviting us to consider other ways of being and running our world. And ultimately, you know, this is fixed star energy. This is cosmic galactic energy. This is helping us to raise our frequency. So I hope you have found that interesting. You know, let me know if you have Alphard in your chart. I've had a lot of clients recently with strong Alphard connections, which never surprises me because that is how it works. Um, so it's definitely an energy that is coming into my awareness. So, um, you know, I would like to suggest that it is going to be coming up for you as well in its many different expressions. Um, but yeah, it's a very powerful star and one that really, you know, we are invited to work with with much more intention and focus um, going forward. So thank you for watching and I will see you soon.